never ever have enough time to play at all you know everybody wants to walk in someone else's shoes everyone's forgotten Creek and Rio Grande, where I'm still engineering Maroon Creek. Now, I'm close, I'm a lot closer than I was uh, at the end of the previous video. So what I've done is I've come in here with the spline in its relative location to where it will be as it's coming across here. Now it will be much higher in the air, but I'm just figuring out where the supports need to be for it. So, you know, there'll be a support here and a support here. And then another one, I haven't decided yet, but I think I'm gonna leave all of the wood here because I'm kind of seeing this area as a specific scene. So any support there will probably come up off of the plywood. So that's where I'm at at the moment. Because uh, some of this plywood is still going to get removed, like probably everything that side of the plywood down there will get removed, as well as this at some point when I've got everything shored up. So let me show you what I've done on the underneath side. So here's a look at what I've done. And these right here are just set in there. Uh, all of them are at the moment. I haven't made any final decision about where exactly they go. But like this one, you know, it's designed for the spline more so than the plywood. Now I think eventually I can fasten it to the plywood because I don't think I'm gonna remove all of it that's interfacing with it now but I've left an area in there where I can come through with my wiring in between. And these center ones here, the ones that are closer to the center of where the, where the actual road bed is, where the, the rail comes through, I will probably glue those to the plywood and then fasten them to the, the joist later on. And you can see, just have eighth inch masonite, and I haven't made any final decisions of where they go, but I'm real close to making those final decisions. And it's, it's working out pretty good. I would say the only thing I have left to kind of figure out is I think I need a little more support in this area on the far end just because there's a lot of area from this riser all the way across to the far end, kind of where the, the Y diverges from the two turnouts that are there. And it's not gonna be any big deal, it's just a matter of making a decision. Now, if you'll remember from previous iterations of the Otter Creek and Rio Grande, I had envisioned in here an area for my airbrush station. And I ixnade that in a big way because I just couldn't come up with a simple solution to support this end of the plywood uh, because of the way the river separated. So I, I needed to support this end and that end without anything going across and honestly it's a better decision anyway because now I plan on placing pardon the spin and the knock but I plan, plan on placing the, uh, the airbrush station somewhere on this side of the room so I can go through the wall with the vacuum system and instead of, because what I was gonna do is go through the door with a blast gate. Uh, not gonna do that. That was really a bad idea anyway. So now I can go through the wall with a blast gate and hopefully find a way to 
tuck that whole thing on the end of the layout right here, which, you know, has me sitting in front of the door, but that's really no big deal. It's not like I'm going to spend, you know, any great amount of time in front of the door airbrushing, at least I don't think I will be. Certainly won't be while I'm operating, so who cares? So that's where I'm at now, and I'm gonna get busy doing some other things and show you what I've done, rather than tell you what I'm gonna do. starting to make a little more sense now. Right now, I believe, you know, there's really nothing keeping me from taking this back off and going back and, and working on the workbench for uh, cork and track as needed. I've got a total of six risers glued to the bottom. I've got two back here. I've got two right there, and then one here and one there. And then I've got another little riser there that is just kind of there for now, but I'm gonna think about how this connects and kind of make sure that it's nice and solid. To overall, the leveling is pretty good. Not sure how well you can see, but you know, this is nice and level. And then that's nice and level. And down at the far end, the stretch that runs from here back that way is nice and level. There appears to be a little bit of a downhill grade 
in this area right here. I'm hoping that I can maybe bring that up a little bit. I'm doubtful because that's where my splice is and there's very little flexibility there, but it's very slight. Uh, matter of fact, if you use the small, if you use the small level here, you can see that it's, it's nice and level going across, and that's essentially where the furthest bridge will be going across the creek. But if you put the four foot level on it, you can see it's still level, but I've got this gap on either side, so it's dished out a little bit. Which I don't, again, I don't think it's gonna cause me any problems. Uh, looking back this way on the run, See if I can do this. So the run going back towards the Y there, you can see I'm running downhill just a little bit on this end. So right in this area, there's just a little bit of a dish and I'm just gonna have to see if I can fix it uh, maybe with another riser. I'm doubtful that I'll be able to, but uh, I think it's going to work regardless. Now, before I, I take this back off, I think that what I want to do is go ahead and, and figure out a little bit of what's going to go on here with the bench work. I've got my studs marked, and so I, I think I know where I need to put the ledger board that's gonna go across here. And I wanna kind of figure some of that out because, you know, down on this end, I don't think I will need a leg of any kind to support what's coming across, but I'm definitely gonna need one down on this end. So the weekend is kind of coming to a close and I haven't let these risers dried completely. So I'm gonna leave everything alone at the moment, think about it for another week, and get started back next weekend and, and see where we're at then. You can see I've created an analog for what I'm thinking about for the bench work underneath Maroon Creek above the staging yard. And so this is an idea at this point. I think that conceptually it's gonna work. I just don't know that I like exactly how it's being done. You can see, you know, this really comes way down into the painted backdrop, which, you know, I have measured, it's about six inches to the bottom of that from, you know, the top of what's the painted sky. And, and going all the way around, that would not touch anything, you know, in the terra forma, if you will. You know, it's not gonna get into the top of any of the mountains or any trees. I still don't like it, which, there's no reason why I can't make that uh, less than it is. I mean, like I could make it a two inch or maybe even an inch and a half because it's going to be well supported all the way across, uh, you know, with screws going in to the two befores in the wall. So I'm, I'm not really concerned about the length of this because I, it's not needed for strength. So that will for sure, I just got to make a decision of how much of that I want to keep. And then the other issue, again, is this, which that's a two inch piece that's going to provide the, the feet, you know, for the plywood like I've done in here, It'd be the same concept. Uh, I'm going to have to avoid for sure all of my turnout motors which I will have the capacity to slide those around wherever I want. 
and for sure miss them, that's not going to be an issue. I'm just wondering if I, if I should do a one inch block there instead of a two inch block. So I'm going to have to do some thinking about this. Uh, of course, everything on the back side here, that'll get painted sky blue once I've got it all figured out. So it'll help blend in with the painted backdrop. Since I'm trying to create bench work that's slim and unobtrusive, I thought I, I better make sure that I'm referring to Lynn Westcott's model railroad bench whip, which, you know, is in my opinion, the uh, absolute best thing I've found for, for bench work. Uh, page 35 deals with the different types of girder systems that you can make use of. And of course, you know, it, it discusses sag and spread, which is something to to be considered, you know, where do you put your supports and what happens if you don't get them put in the right places or what could happen. Uh, great, great publication. So as mentioned, I'm not concerned at all about the backside there because it's gonna be supported every 16 inches and there's not gonna be any sagging on it whatsoever. It's gonna be nice and strong. But in the front of the layout where I might need to duck under and do something through a window that's going to be in the fascia, I'd like to keep my girders as thin as they are, or as thin as I can get them. And so here you can see if I use a one by two with, uh, with a flange or as Boomer calls them, a strong back, my maximum spread is six feet, and then the overhang maximum is 24 inches. So, you know, what that means is that the distance between where the supports are, I should not introduce anything more than six feet, and anything beyond where the support is, you know, the down leg, I don't want anything greater than two feet going past the leg. So here I've measured from where it's going to be supported down on that end to where six feet is. And you can see that somewhere right around in here is where I'm going to need to have a leg. And then beyond that leg, I can't have any more than two feet you know, past it this way. And so here is where the splice is on the staging yard, which the plywood for the above section will actually be approximately three inches further this way. So, you know, the splice for the upper section is gonna be right in here somewhere, which is within my two feet of forgiveness for the overhang. So that's for sure. I think what I'm going to do is the, uh, the one by two strong back, both on the front and the back. Now, according to Mr. Westcott, the maximum support spread of one by two without the strong back is 29 inches, which won't be a problem in this area, but you can see back here, I've got 50 inches that's gonna be needed to be supported. So I'm gonna have to, to think about that because I'm gonna need extra support, I believe, somewhere back in there. Right now, I'm, I'm thinking that that can probably be done with all thread because I might need to put something in between some tracks in here. I don't, I don't know. That's going to, that's going to be a challenge. Nothing that I'm going to do in this video for sure.
of caution, if you do decide to go this route with any of your bench work, you can see on this particular girder, I ended up with a pretty good bow. And <clears throat> I can, there's enough flex that if I put enough pressure on it, I don't know if I can, I can't show it, but I can straighten that out. So this one will go on the wall in there because I can, I can level the first half of it, making sure that the top of the bow there, uh, the top of the crown is level with where it needs to be and then put it solidly into a two before, then I can force the far end up and make sure that it's all level because it's easy enough to do when you're dealing with something solid. So, I'm not sure how that happened. I'm thinking that it was just a matter of how I glued it up and, and nailed it. So I, I did something a little bit different with this one where I started in the center, which is the opposite of what I did on that one. And I also have let it be clamped to my workbench until the glue dries. So I'm hoping that this one turns out nice and straight and I'm going to see if that worked right now. All right, you can see that one is much better than the other one. So, that's something to pay attention to if you're going to go with a with a narrower L girder like this. Now, over here, I did go ahead and mark what needs to be cut on this piece of plywood. This is the piece of the plywood for the, the furthest east end of what will be Maroon Creek, kind of where the stamp mill is gonna go. And I'm not ready to cut that yet. It's just, I felt like now was the best time to go ahead and mark the plywood and be ready to cut it later, because uh, I'm, I'm gonna move on to messing with this stuff and kind of getting a game plan for how it's gonna work. Some people like working with computer assisted drawing programs to kind of figure this kind of thing out. I like working with my hands and just <laughs> clamping stuff together and looking at it and thinking about it uh, to come up with my solutions. So right now, everything is just in place and basically level. Now, up here I am uh, secure to the wall, but everything else is held in place with clamps. And you kind of have an idea of the window of space that I have. And we're looking at about 12 inches from here to the top of the bottom of that girder, which is less than what I had figured. I had thought that it was gonna be 17 inches. Uh, obviously, I'm not good at math, and that's probably the deal, but uh, it, it's gonna work, I'm happy with it. Now, down on this end, I've got an L girder scabbed on here that will help set the level for the one going across here. And then you can't really see it, but I've got an extra cross beam, a cross joist down here that will interface and I will be able to come up from it to the bottom of this L girder and provide, you know, a solid support on this end beyond just what's hanging off of the bottom of this. So the other thing that I'm that I'm still kind of working on are the legs. And I'm not sure, but I, I've got two options here. One is, is to create a leg that's actually supported on top of the plywood or one that goes all the way down to the ground. I like the idea of having one on top of the plywood supporting it, which I think there's plenty of strength there. I don't think I, I, I would be concerned about, you know, downward force causing many problems because the, 
the staging yard is, is well solid. Uh, and the advantage of doing that would be, I think my fascia interface would be a lot better that way. Uh, I think I've got a little problem with clearance maybe in this area on that leg, but uh, that's kind of where I'm at is, is figuring out exactly how do the legs interface with this up here. And right now, I'll, I'll show you what I'm thinking. And that's this rather large chunk of, of angle iron that would be supported by the leg rather than the wall. That way I'm not uh, messing with any clearance on this way, which I've got less clearance there. I've got plenty of clearance here, and then I'm not screwing up my, my backdrop. And I think that will work fine, and I don't think I need one down on that end. I'm also still thinking about how all of this in here is going to work. And right now I'm leaning heavily towards making the support come straight across from the wall out to the front of the layout and then not extending anything you know, that, that L girder will not extend this way, that all of my support will come from the wall and then coming up with supports that will be supported by the staging yard and either doing a threaded rod or something along those lines. And I think I would have probably two more legs, one about right here and one right here, and then there will be an L girder across this part and that part, you know, similar to what I've already got down on this side. So that's where I'm at at the moment is just kind of cleaning up what's going to go on here and getting it to a point to where I can throw a sheet of plywood on top of it. Well, I think that pretty much covers it for this video. Uh, I'm going to continue working. It's, it's kind of the beginning of the weekend, but I'm at a point in my production of, of film footage that I, I need to quit right here and begin anew. So thanks for watching Otter Creek and Rio Grande. Subscribe and we will see you guys next week or couple weeks, however long it takes to get out another video.